What's the best way to control eosinophilic esophagitis? If you're up for it, it's to discover and eliminate the foods that trigger the disease. And so in this video, we'll discuss recent studies that guide us on an EOE elimination diet. Most EOE elimination diets are empiric, which means based on observing how other patients have done eliminating certain foods, we've come to understand what are the common triggers. You then eliminate those same triggers and observe how you feel. What about a targeted lab test? In these modern times, shouldn't we be able to just draw your blood and tell you what your personal triggers are? That sounds great, but we also understand in these modern times that our immune system behaves differently in our blood than it does in our GI tract. As we explored in the video on digestion, your GI tract is like a black hole. It's gonna break down the food that you eat into forms that are essentially unrecognizable by the time they actually enter into your bloodstream. And this is probably part of the reason that our immune system in the blood really bears no resemblance to how our immune system behaves in your GI tract. Supporting the benefits of an empiric diet over a targeted diet, a recent study compared head-to-head -head various empiric diets against targeted diets, and we're gonna discuss the results of that shortly, but first, let's discover some of the basic elimination diets for EOE. Over time, GI doctors have noted that EOE patients are triggered by six major food groups, dairy, grains, legumes, eggs, seafood, and nuts. And with time, they refined that the main problem for grains is wheat and the main problem for legumes is soy. And thus, the six food elimination diet was born. Further observations gave a more detailed ranking to the likelihood that each of these six triggers would actually cause EOE. This is empiric research. And these observations led to the four food elimination diet and discarded tree nuts and seafood because those were just simply less likely triggers of EOE. And they're common triggers of anaphylactic reactions, but they don't so much cause eosinophilic esophagitis. It was then observed that the most common offender was dairy and that a relatively close second was wheat. And this led to other thoughts to have a single food or a two food elimination diet. But the big picture is to try to move away from the very restrictive six food elimination diet to provide patients with some more practical options that fit a busy lifestyle. Now returning to the before mentioned study, which evaluated the response of patients to the six food elimination diet, the four food elimination diet, a single food elimination diet, essentially meaning dairy, and a targeted elimination diet. And what it found was that the six food elimination diet is most effective with well over 90% of patients achieving clinical remission, which is very effective. The four food elimination diet also fared really well with a good three out of four patients improving on this diet. The single food elimination diet, interestingly, did a little bit better. And actually, nearly 90% of patients enjoyed benefit. I think that that's probably reflective because if you just focus on one trigger, you're going to do that one really well. And that's sometimes the most important thing. And what about the target elimination diet that was driven based on a lab test? It didn't really do so well. Nearly one in three patients who tried that method had no benefit at all. It's become my practice to let any patient with EOE know that an elimination diet is a very good option to pursue and some information about what those different diets look like. I tend to encourage that people actually start with a single food elimination diet. And I do that for two reasons. First, they're very likely to have good success. And secondly, if they need more, they're gonna learn best how to do an elimination diet by first focusing on a single food. And I think that that makes it easier as we make them have a more restrictive diet towards four foods, six foods. I tend to steer away from a target elimination diet until a patient has failed the empiric options, but there is a place for referring to allergy testing to give us some guidance, even if it sometimes feels like we're trying to read tea leaves. As we embark upon any elimination diet, I think that it's important to remember that we avoid being overly restrictive in the long run. There is a goal here to reintroduce foods. That's important because when we restrict the foods we eat, we also restrict the foods that the bacteria in our colon can enjoy, and that means that we get a narrower population of colon bacteria. That's not good for our gut microbiome. I hope this information has helped you better understand the options for diet control of eosinophilic esophagitis. Please check out other videos in which we talk about the medication options can also help you along this path. Thank you for watching, and be safe.